trout, trout. Let it all out. What the heck? Oh yeah, it's a little trout. Oh, Guys, right, here we go. Oh, double up. Almost oh. double. Oh, I just lost one. <laughs> Whoa! So we got a beautiful little trout on with the brand new Slam Shady 2.0. If you're tuning in, Joe Simons, Luke Simons, we're back with the Salt Strong Podcast live on the water. If you're picking up some wind, that's because it is windy out today, folks. Winter so time is, front. Yeah, this is one of those days where it's kind of like we looked at it and we're like, man, what do we even do? And we both decided we this time to go out and just get a bunch of tight lines. So if you have one of those, Luke's on right now, got another truck. So, Cody on the camera here. Oh, oh there we are. Luke quick, is quick losing like crazy. There, and so Luke, if you notice, has Slam Shady without the tail. A lot of people think you don't have a tail and a paddle tail. What the, how can that even happen? Right? I mean, paddle tail, <laughs> right? But yeah, the doggone so thing, it uh, it surprisingly works well. Yeah, it's uh, just all about depth control. Yeah, depth control is really important. The paddle, um, right now we're in, uh, my jig head isn't strong enough to, to, I didn't feel like change jig heads. It's not it's not heavy enough to get the paddle tail down. You know, that paddle has some, uh, you know, drag on the water, obviously. And uh, so took the tail off and now I'm getting down, I'm getting down in the strike zone and I started to get more action without the tail. Um, so don't throw away, you know, when a, when a junk fish or whatever pulls off the tail, you know, you don't have to throw it away. Keep it for situations like this when you actually need to get down a little bit deeper. Ooh, I just missed another bite. Yeah, there's a, man, there's a lot of fish. I'm getting a lot of pinfish bites, uh, but I know there's a lot of trout and ladies. So this is the kind of place, I mean, you could see, uh, we're just kind of in the middle of these mangroves of this flat. And man, there are so many fish, especially here in the winter time. And once you kind of find a spot, we could probably fish here the majority of the time, knock on wood. Of course, the bad side about doing these live ones, unlike TV shows that can edit, and you got a ton of people on the boat. We got me, Luke, my boy Cody, and one long video without any breaks, no matter what happens, even when I'm catching weeds. And I promise you it's gonna be better than the last time where we had a brutal long day, but I, from the feedback we've been getting, uh, and we appreciate that, by the way. Thank you guys so much for, for all the comments and, uh, and the feedback. We are doing it real. There are days, like even today, we did not know there was gonna be this much wind out. Uh, it's just, a, it's a grind and we only have 45 minutes where you gotta catch fish. Sometimes it doesn't happen the first 45 minutes, especially when you're in a, a new spot. You get any more strikes? Look at that old bird down there. He's yeah, just a terrorist. There's a lot of pinfish. Can you see that bird there, there Cody? Yeah, he's Jeez. sitting there following us, so we, we need to be careful when we release fish so that he's looking the other way, because he's he's basically, some oops, some of these birds have figured out that if they follow boats, they're, uh, you know, they'll get some free meals, and so it's on us to make sure they don't get these free meals, because they, once they get one, you know, they're going to just keep doing it and just be a total nuisance. So this bird has definitely been fed before. <laughs> one other thing, I'm just going to throw it out there while we're waiting to catch uh, another another nice fish here is, I'm realizing that my job is the host is to make my co-host look really good. Another reason I don't catch as many fish. But in all reality, for those of you that have commented saying, man, Joe, you're really struggling. It's true. The struggle is real. And I do know that my job is to be a good host and be funny and let Luke look really, really, really good. As our friend Sia Richardson said, both in front of our faces and behind our back, out of the Saltstrung brothers, one of them's really good at fishing, and the other one's pretty fun to fish with. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty true. That's why we can't get mad at CA for saying it. We spent a lot of time, we actually spent some time with them. Oh, there we go. Oh, but he's on fire right now. Yeah. Another little trout. little trout. Are you joking me? Dude, out fishing Luke this time. Take that, CA. Take that, all you negative commenters. I'll let you get that I little mean, trout. I mean, you see the size of that Let's guy? Get that little trout out of my way. Dude, he inhaled the little slam shady. Oh, no, I think I got something smaller. <laughs> I think you got a... Oh, I think I got a lizard fish. Oh, you got a bird, uh... Yeah, so that bird right there, we got to watch out for that thing. See, it's following my lizard fish up. So throw it out other side of the boat, Joe. So Jeff. what I'm going to do is... Always release Bird's them. there. Here's my little trout. Get him out as quick as possible. Always release oh. on the opposite side of the bird. Check the slam shady, still looking good. I'm still going paddle, Luke's still paddleless. And um, even though not keeping score here. Yeah, but what we're doing, uh, what Cody we're doing is I'm we have, at least. You know, this is uh, <laughs> winter time. We're just out trying to get some, some action. And so we're just going after the easier fish, right? Trout, 
and uh, ladyfish and all sorts of fish will kind of pull in. We have some, uh, some deep troughs. There's a big grass flat all around oh. us with, uh, with uh, some deep holes out here. And these fish are just, they're just hanging out in these holes trying to get some warmth. And uh, so I'm just doing my best. This wind's cranking. It's a little bit too deep to use the power pole. So I'm having to uh, spend a lot of time maneuvering this trolling motors to keep us within casting range of some of these better holes. All right, let's talk about the $62,000 question. Why this spot? Why, why did we decide to fish this area well, on a day like today just to get a bunch of tight lines? Just because I knew, yeah, the, I knew there's all these holes here. I fished them once before and, uh, and just knew that it's low, it's low tide, you know, those winter mornings with low tide and, uh, and these fish basically have to be in these holes. And so it's literally, it's pretty simple. When you simple. say hole, how deep we talking for the, well, the, oh, the flats? Uh, there we go. There we are. Ladyfish. Uh, Try not to get in your line there. The flats about maybe two. Oh, that was you hitting my line. Yeah, so I was trying to help you out there, bro. <laughs> Oh, that bird's going after your bit, your your fish. Well, yeah, the, the flat's about a uh, couple foot, lady fish. Flat's about two and a half feet, and uh, and the holes are getting down to probably I don't know, maybe five, five to six, which isn't huge, but it's enough, enough to be holding a bunch of fish. Look at that, slam shady strikes again. Even oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> You see that, Cody? Dude, now this is officially PG-13. I'm gonna let him get a little bit of the poop off. Remember, birds on that side, so throw, yeah. throw it away on the other side, Joe. Thing just destroyed the side of your boat. Looks like this guy, or girl, whatever, had, had some coffee this morning. Sheesh. Yep, bird didn't see it. Good work. Yep, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to maybe try to clean off the side of your boat there yeah. for your sake. You guys are enjoying this as much as we are. <laughs> and, yeah. and do let us know. We love, really love the feedback in terms of these live, uh, these live podcast slash YouTube videos. Yeah. Completely unedited. Even the bird poop. You get to see me. I fish, can't find any fish cups poop, or anything. Mean. That's the called bird, respect the right bird do there, that dude. or the fish do that? Huh? Did the bird do that? You said bird poop. Quite honestly, it was a mixture of me and the All right, let's see if this is a trout lady. here. No, another lady fish. Dang it. But this is fun though, guys. I mean, you know that one time, Luke, we took my daughter Shauna out and did this same kind of thing. Paddle tail. Found a flat that had a hole nearby. And what do you know? Tons of tight lines. She's still talking about it. And, you know, some of us, Take it for granted, even. Whoa, there's another one. What's that? It's a nice lady. Yeah, that or a tarpon. This thing is pulling out drag. <laughs> um, we take it for granted and we want to go out there and catch these trophy fish, which we do and is awesome. But man, sometimes um, just going out here and just getting a bunch of tight lines on fish like this is a blast. Is that a mackerel? Yeah, that's a mackerel. It is a mackerel, isn't it? Oh, gone. Yes, yeah, so this kind of fishing. <laughs> This kind of Do you fish see how I hooked a little him? bit of everything. Yeah, I snagged it. Oh, we got a double. Well, he can't break me off like that. It's a nice mackerel, too. Oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> wait Check that bad boy have. out. It's a nice little mackerel for the flat. Oh, oh look, this, wait, let's this feed is the embarrassing. mackerel. <laughs> this is <laughs> embarrassing. All right, this is going to be the <laughs> thumbnail pick right here. <laughs> oh, man, that's not good. <laughs> Dude, that is a trip, man. So you can literally catch a little bit of everything. Seriously, All that's, right, a, that's a solid mackerel. Do you uh, do you want to keep them by chance? No, I don't have any ice for them. All right. Whoop. All right, I'm gonna get some pliers here, Cody. You can uh, film film Luke. So. Yeah, and so so what? So now that we found some fish, right? We found a pocket of fish. I'm keeping the boat, right? I'm facing into the wind with the trolling motor, keeping the boat away from that zone. A lot of times, these fish they'll be in little pockets. And again, it's a lot of times it's based on the, the water temperature. And uh, so I'm just making sure that we're not, that we're not, you know, busting everything out too early. That's, that's a lot of the mistake I used to always make is uh, I would just go in there, I'd kind of power into it. And uh, yes, you catch some fish, but you can often catch a lot more if you just simply, uh, you know, keep yourself out of the zone 
keep yourself a, a good distance away where you can have a long cast into it, not spook the fish, and, uh, and just pluck them out one at a time. So did, did you recall looking to see what the strike score was? I didn't, I just knew we were going. I think, so I I think it was bother. like a six. It definitely was not I think it was a good. six or a six one for, uh, for this area. If you guys don't know about the strike score, it's a, a really cool tool that we developed. It's smartfishingtides.com where, you know, it's a place you can obviously see all the tides, every tide station, pretty much known to man with an in, in NOAA, right? Keeps track of that stuff? Yep. And you got all the different weather, the wind directions, moon phases, sonar, a little bit of everything. And then the cherry on top is the strike score. And it was developed for inshore anglers, you know, really from Texas up to Virginia. Uh, so we're talking redfish, speckled trout, snook, flounder. Yeah, it's just specifically for those species. And know, it tells it you, where you are. every day, and even now hourly, uh, the strike score is for the day, but hourly when the best bite should be in your area based on a proprietary formula that we've, uh, that we've created and, uh, and continually update. So, yeah, and I used to use those, you know, salooner tables. Those are real popular. What, what those don't account for is the actual weather. And the weather is a really big, really big impact. That was like the, the thing I did wrong for many years is I would just, just look at tides only uh, or I would just go and not even look at that. But, uh, but I, now like I, I really put whoa, whoa. The, the actual weather itself uh, really high up on, like even higher than tides now on, on as far as my decision making on where I'm going and, uh, and, and obviously what my game plan is, what spots I go to, which ones I don't. Now I'm tailless. Yeah, now we're Check both tailless. Check that out, Cody. Now we're both going tailless. So I'm personally, because I've been obviously having... There we are. Oh, that's, a, that's a better fish there. Nice, Lukey. Are you tailless too? Yeah. Oh, I'm sticking tailless. Was interesting though, last week... Watch out. You need to go in the back. Yeah, turn the trail motor off. Off? Yeah. Whoa. I don't know what the heck this thing is. Last week, Luke was, uh, sorry guys, if you're listening to the podcast and not watching, uh, Luke was moving all over the boat, got something a little bit nicer. Could be another big micro. Oh man, what I think it? it's a... No, no, it's a stinger. <laughs> I think it's a stinking... I got a uh, foul hook to... A ladyfish? I foul hooked a ladyfish, dang it. Well, that's embarrassing, folks. That thing was fighting good. <laughs> Sorry, we were uh, pivoting all around the boat. Luke thought he had a <laughs> I legit yeah, cause, fish. Because when you hook ladyfish in the mouth, you can you can actually control them. You can feel their heads moving. This one, it was hooked right on the forehead. I've never hooked a ladyfish there before. That's, it was hooked right on the forehead, basically, and it was just bulldozing. It felt like a redfish. There's the, this whatever the school is of mackerel, ladies, and probably some jacks and trout. They are just thrashing the slam shady. And sometimes getting foul hooked in the in the midst of it. But doggone, I mean, isn't this fun? I don't know how long we've been going here. Maybe 10 minutes or so. And already, you know, I mean, t it feels like every cast there's at least a little strike. But we've already landed quite a few fish. Yeah, nothing massive except that mackerel was actually pretty nice. That was a legit mackerel. But doggone, that's just so much fun, especially if you have friends or neighbors or a boss, kids especially. Man, just go out there and get a bunch of tight lines. How much fun is that? Or even if you're waiting on the tide, like right now the water's real low. Base is kind of just killing some time waiting on the water to come up and then we'll go after some reds and snook. And, uh, and this is a good way to basically, I basically try to go out and catch a slam every trip. And uh, when in need of a trout, this is like the, the easiest, the most dependable way to go out there and get some trout. Granted, we, have, we want to cut a couple. So what I, some before we started filming. But, so what uh, I don't like about this tailless paddle tail is I've, I'm used to you know doing more of my little straight retrieve, and now I'm having to fish it more like, yeah, you have to. like a jerk shad or like a shrimp. It's on you to make it look good. And that's why paddle tails are so effect effective is that you don't have to do much. Let the paddle tail kind of do, do my, the work. Uh, my left brain is telling my right brain to straight retrieve. You know what I noticed? Oh man, that was oh, a There we go. I about fell over. <laughs> what I noticed out. from the last podcast, if one. you guys, the last one, the title was, um, what was it? 
basically just how to catch anything in really crummy conditions when no one, even some of the guys we talked to, it was just a really tough day. And man, I watched myself in kind of the game film, if you will. And it was interesting, you know, I was, I think both of us were getting kind of nervous towards the, you know, we'd gone like 40 minutes and we only caught one fish. And uh, I even started like reeling faster, even though my head was saying to slow down. I, I, I saw how fast I was reeling, which is like no wonder. Uh, I think part of that was just the pressure of trying to catch a fish when we're live. Do you agree with that, Luke? I mean, that thing. Oh uh, yeah, it's just it's just losing you kind of losing patience whether we're filming or not, right? It's just kind of human instinct to start wanting to hurry or get impatient and uh, and just change things up and not really focus on the actual details on what's happening. So it's a good reminder when you're having a tough day, don't try to speed it up. Actually, slow it down. Go slower, especially depending on when you're watching this. If it is still winter time, man, slow it down. I think that's been one of my biggest mistakes. And I ain't too proud to beg y'all <laughs> or tell you about it on air. Because that's what this whole thing is about is, is, is teaching. And, and yes, for those of you who have commented on it, yeah, Luke is a better fisherman. And I am more of the fun guy entertainer. And, um, and I, I think that represents probably a big chunk of us, right? That just have jobs and want to go out there and get tight lines and, ha and just have fun, right? Uh, when I'm going out, my goal is to get tight lines. Today's a good, uh, good reminder of, of why we, every once in a while, change it up and do trips like this. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And we're, uh, we probably need to wrap this up pretty soon because if, uh, for those watching, if you look over on this side of the boat, this is deep. You can see the sand, it's lighter color, deeper water. And now if you look this way, which is where the wind's taking us, um, it's pretty much all flat. Whoop. There's the, there's one little hole. You can see it's starting to get light, but it's instead of being six feet deep from where we just came from, those holes we were just fishing, now it's only about three and a half. And uh, there might be some fish here, but probably not. Let's, and then, let's fish it just to show that difference, because that oh yeah. to me that's a, a great learning tool just to see how important and critical it is to find that deeper hole on days like today. Yeah, we um, might catch Cody, some. how long have we been going? Can you see? Probably about 18 minutes. 18? Okay, cool. Whoa. I just actually had something. Yeah, I got a little strike there too. So there's still going to be a lot of pinfish on here and maybe some trout, Ooh. but um, just the, the amount of fish. You know, before those fish, like fish in a barrel, they're all kind of combined in one area. Now they're going to be more spread out and, uh, and there just won't be quite as many of them. Again, that's all seasonal. And this is based on the most recent trends on, the, on what's been happening with the weather. So it has nothing to do with the tides. It's more about weather than anything else. Again, that's what, that's what most of like the fish forecast things um, don't really account for, like the Sulunar in particular. And, and talk about too, Luke, we've had a lot of comments from people saying, hey, I, I don't have a trolling motor. You could have easily, just as easily, I know this is a little bit windier, so it's not the perfect day to do it, but you could have just as easily put a stick at pin or an anchor down on a spot like that, or just like we're doing right now, the troll motor's been off for quite some time. We are just drifting this flat. We're using the wind as our trolling motor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this uh, is the best way to fish from a boat without a trolling motor is quiet. to target, to target you know, the, the trout, the mackerel, just target the outer sides of this, the grass flats for those who are in areas with seagrass. And if you don't have seagrass, target like the outside of oyster ooh, bars, ooh. like oyster reefs, and uh, like three to six feet of water, sometimes deeper, because there's just so many fish out there and they're spread around. And you can just you can just drift down the drift down the edges or even right over the top of them, and uh, and have some. We actually did a uh, insider report, and uh, I fished with a couple of members. I think it was a year ago, um, with a uh, a bay boat without a trolling motor, and we caught a slam. And because we just use the wind to our advantage, right? We let the wind take us to the spots. Uh, the trout were obviously the easiest because they're oftentimes going to be on these open flats. Redfish and snook are a little bit diff more difficult. They're, they're typically holding near hard structure like islands or, or uh, even further shallow. So um, it's tougher for those species, but like sea trout, mackerel, ladyfish, just like what we're doing right now, you can do this in any boat. It's, it's just a really easy, easy way to fish and it's, Shallower. And you can almost always get some action, regardless of 
Uh, the weather, as you see now, and even the tides, this really isn't a very good tide right now. Um, yet we're still getting some, uh, some action. But again, as you see, or, the, or here for those listening, is our action totally stopped as soon as we got out of that hole. We're still getting, like, I, if you watch my rod tip, I'm still getting a bunch of little pinfish strikes. But other than that, we're not getting into the, the yeah, real the, stuff. The predators, they all those. Speaking of bait, Luke, speaking of bait, yep. tell a little story. So a couple weekends ago, we had our insider event, which was awesome. And one of the fun things that we do is it was a, a party at E.G. Simmons Park. We had uh, 150 or so people showed up. And a few of us camped out, it was really, really fun. And one of the events that we had was the mullet toss, where you take a frozen, you know, I'm, oh, there we go, ooh, a frozen a mullet and try to throw it into a, uh, into a bucket, a five gallon bucket. And, you know, it was kind of chaos at the end and then this raccoon started coming up, uh, wanting a, a piece of these, uh, these mullet. I think I just got robbed, yeah, doggone. I'm in a puffer fish or something nailed me there. Yeah, it's completely swiped me clean. Um, so Luke's like, hey, can you get, you know, get, get the cast in? And because he has a truck and I had the Tahoe, a Tahoe, so I put him back in the Tahoe. Thankfully, that night uh, I did camp, but it was a really cold night, so nothing, uh, nothing too terribly happened. Next day I go home, don't even know about what I'm about to tell you, but put the cast in the garage. And two days later, might have been three days later. Yeah, it was three when yeah, you Yeah, actually over. three. Yeah, so it was Wednesday. So it was a Sunday night I got home. So now the mold have been basically decomposing in this five-gallon bucket since Saturday. It's now Wednesday, and my wife goes in the garage, and she comes in and gets me. She's like, go in there and smell this. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, either it's a raccoon. It wasn't like a mouse. Like, I was like... It was either a raccoon or like one of our neighbor's cats or something got in here and died. I was like, this is, I mean, it was morbid, like, like, like almost gagging bad. And so I'm looking around and I can't figure out what it is. And uh, so I just leave. I was like, you know, I'm gonna have to deal with this later. And then I ended up hanging out with Luke that day. I was going driving to see you and bring it up. And it turns out Luke had left how many mullet? It was all of them. It was like at least a dozen mullet. A dozen uh, mullet, and they were, the, they were underneath the cast net, so I had no idea there was dead mullet <laughs> under there, and these things were just completely decomposing. Oh, man, it was disgusting. So we had to throw out the entire cast net because Luke's like, man, I don't want to mess with that. I didn't want to mess with it. Yeah, that was, My wife was like, get this thing out of here now before it starts ripping paint off the wall. <laughs> so for those of you that uh, ever want to play a good prank on someone, and maybe have an old net that has a bunch of holes in it you can't use, it's a pretty good prank. <laughs> Jeez. The best accidental prank ever. You got a strike there? That I'm going to do one more tailless. There's a bunch of pinfish down there. Yeah, the uh, a pinfish and puffers. Because no pinfish, that was a clean puffer strike. I don't know if you guys can see the pinfish nailing <laughs> my rod tip. Will pop up, pop up. You see that, Cody? Yeah, we need to time to move spots. Well, if you want to, we can just kind of close it up uh, here then. Yeah. Yeah, because again, the, this is the core thing is about to maximize results on, on just gnarly days like this, where it's just kind of nasty, wintertime, low tides. Just find those deep pockets. Find the deep pockets near a big flat like this, and those fish will basically like just naturally gravitate there. And, uh, and that's, as you saw there, we, were, we fished that, that good area just for, what, 15 minutes or whatever, and we had a lot of... A lot of bent rods, nothing awesome. That that mackerel is a nice surprise, but uh, you just never know what you're going to get when uh, when doing it. And it's just a, a great way to go out with with just simple a, a simple paddle tail and a jig head and uh, and catch a bunch of fish. Even regardless of skill level, you can get little kids out and uh, and have them catch a bunch of fish as well. Yeah. And once again, stick with paddle tail. Get yourself some slam shadies right there at shop.saltstrong.com. I, I really do believe. It is the easiest lure and the quickest way to just get a bunch of tight lines. You can catch them even with the tail completely <laughs> bitten off. And so guys, if you like these, please let us know. Let us know any other specific topics, species, areas you want us to try. I believe next week we are gonna be going out with Captain Peter Deke, so we're gonna be hitting the East Coast. And the goal is to keep trying completely new areas. I know we're gonna do one up in the Panhandle, uh, probably here's it when it warms up a little bit more. 
and uh, let us know. And then finally, if you want to see, this is just like a taste of what we're giving our insider clubs. They get to see exactly where we fish. We pinpoint yeah. all the pre-trip planning, why we fish there. And we're doing it on both coasts. We go all over the place every single week. And then the thing that I think most people love now is the, it, we call it like the cliff notes. It's the smart fishing uh, guide. The game plan. The it's game the weekly plan. game plan. Every the, Friday just goes through the weather, right? Looks at the weather really for the entire Southeast. And, uh, and, and combines that with the recent trends to give a game plan on what to do. In 10 minutes or less, you'll know exactly what to do, what spots to look for, what spots not to look for. Like today, for example, where I'll get on Google Maps and I'll show at the lowest level exactly where we are so that you can see what type of structure is in the area and then look for similar spots like that. There's a thousand spots like this. And uh, so it's not about this spot in particular, it's about the type of spot for the conditions. And so that's really the big benefit of being part of the club because we show we share all of that information and then the the logical piece so that's the emotional piece of catching more fish in less time right tight lines in less time the logical piece in terms of saving money do we have some sick discounts on all the same stuff we're using here from the reels the rods the lures the jig heads etc yeah not, and, and big we, brands too. we had dinner last night uh, with a big tackle distributor, and, and we are going to have some really sick stuff, including Oakley glasses, Costas, Smiths, when you get your Smiths on. Uh, so we will have literally everything that you can imagine that you need for fishing. Really, really amazing discounts. And anywhere on 10 on the low end, even 40, 50% off on the high end. And that's only for our Insider members. No one else gets that. So just one more reason to join the Insider Club. We're up to 12,000 now. We just broke through 12,000 yeah. members. Pretty stoked about that. Yeah, and, and as it grows too, the, the discounts are going to get better and better. So, uh, and so do the relationships and the yep. people and the private community. So if you haven't joined, go to saltstrong.com. Check out more. We'd love to see you in there. We've made a complete no-brainer. I, I really wish all companies did this, which is a 365-day 100% money back guarantee. That means if you aren't catching more fish, having more fun and meeting friends, if you don't feel like it was the best fishing investment you've ever made, then you get your money back, no questions asked. Um, shoot us an email, we, we were raised by parents, hardworking parents that taught us we don't deserve to keep your money if you're not thrilled with our, our product or service. So made it that simple, uh, no brainer. We'd love to see you part of it. Here's some um, paddleboard and tough day to be on a paddleboard. I'm guessing yeah, they, they uh, probably didn't. Uh, you want to zoom in there, Cody? Um, <laughs> I'm glad looks like his, uh, his wife back there is probably screaming at him right now, yeah. saying, why did you bring me out here? The winds are like 18 <laughs> mile an hour, and they're going right if into they're, it. If they're camping, they have a long way. I might actually see if they need to lift. So there's some campsites pretty close. They're about a mile and a half, two miles away, <laughs> and it's totally upwind from where they are now. Yeah, it's brutal. Oh, we'll go say hi I to think, I think that's where they're going. <laughs> meet, some, meet some new friends. So, Let's see what guys, we out here. Thank you for all the love, all the support. Go to saltstore.com, join the Insider Club. And if you're already a member, the next best thing that you can do is leave us a review and subscribe to this podcast and our YouTube channel. It helps us out tremendously. You guys are awesome. We be out. Hey there, it's Joe Simons, one of the co-founders here at Salt Strong. Have you claimed your free pack of these irresistible slam shady paddle tail lures. If not, click down below to grab yours. If you're an inshore saltwater angler and you wanna catch more redfish, more speckled trout, more snook, more flounder, then you have to check out these lures. We got one pack for free for every angler that wants them. Click down below now to grab yours.